And welcome back to Taco Race Driver 2. We are continuing on with the secondary career and the next championship is of course the convertible tour and we have 10 races to do. Three laps each we have Surfers Paradise, Kailami, Vallelunga, Bathurst, Mantorp Short, Shortwood Park, Loch Rannoch 1 and 2, Michigan Loop and Southfield Heights. Should take about 53 minutes and there was a vote as well on what car to choose. It was either between the Jaguar XKR or the Aston Martin DB7 and you decided to go for the Aston Martin. So we're going to choose which colour should we have. Oh, we can only have one of two colours, silver or black. We're going to go for black because why not? So let's get race one. It's Surfers Paradise underway and we're starting sixth of 12 cars on the grid. And off we go. Uh, this series shouldn't take 50 minutes uh, because we usually get through the menus pretty quickly so that's just an average time of how long it usually takes if you're using the AI pathing but yeah it shouldn't take that long. Oh just be very careful I didn't want to go headfirst into the wall. Now, I don't know what's going wrong with OBS recently and it seems to be a lot of frame skips or the, the frames being dropped during recording. Um, I have no idea why that's happening. I'll have to look into the settings, but... Yeah, I did it on GT Legends, but only did it at Cadwell Park, so not unless it's something to do with the circuit as well. I haven't got a clue, but... I'll look into it. I don't really like uh, having frames being dropped. I want to go for quality. I'm very picky and OCD about that, so... Oh well, let's get past this Jag. Hopefully make it up into a second if he doesn't block his line, which he is. Come on, get out of the way. Whoa, he's a feisty little git him, isn't he? I did ask for questions. Uh, if anyone wanted to ask questions, like another Q&A while I do these series. And I was inundated with zero. So, great. So I'm going to have to just make up crap on the fly, but oh well. Sounds like the car is a bomb. They've got a little ticking noise in the background. It's where they just loop the engine noise, I think. Dive up the inside, take the lead. And there we go, that should be uh, the race one from our point of view. So you'll probably find within the next couple of weeks to a month, I will be continuing on with series I've already started, like Destruction Derby, I need to get that finished, uh, Truck Racer as well, Colin McRae Rally 2, I need to get more of that done. Um, I haven't been able to reinstall the first Colin McRae game yet, because uh, I can't remember what patches and, and files I use to actually get the game running to begin with. Um, so that's going to be a bit of a pain, but I do plan on getting the older series done, get them out of the way so I can then start new series. And I've got a lot lined up for you in the near future, so... Um, yeah, it's, it's all go at the moment. I'm just trying to find a right balance on what to upload, what to record, this that, and the other, so... You'll probably find, uh, yeah, a, a lot of Truck Racer. Again, Colin McRae, probably once now and again because it does take a long time to edit with the replays and stuff so yeah so before I start anything new just trying to get the older stuff out the way finished off and and what have you because I do want to get Destruction Derby out the way as well so I can get on with the, the second one which is in my opinion the best one it's just finding time at the moment Let's get this race over and done with quickly. 
pull that massive lead about uh, five seconds. I'll say again, this is very, very silent and very lonely without old Scotty raging off in our ears. Oh well. Well, that was clever. Let's have a look. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. Kind of. The rear brake lights, I don't know why they do that warped weird nonsense, because brake lights don't do that. But. Oh well, he's definitely seen better days. What do they expect? They gave me the keys to the car, so... They're gonna expect it to be a bit banged up. And just cut across. Lovely job. And that is it. Race victory for race number one. Nine to go. And huzzah. Nicely done. So who was second? Pete Stanley was second. And Hugh Stamp was the top three. Right. Let's get on with uh, Kyle Army for race two. And off we go. Now they actually used to have a convertible series in NASCAR back in the 50s. And, uh, yeah, only lasted, I think, three seasons or something, but, yeah, it was really unusual to see. Especially some of the drivers. I can't remember which driver it was. It might have been Joe Weatherly. Um, he looked incredibly tall in the car. His head would actually be above the roll bar at the back. And I was, I was just thinking, that is definitely not safe. But then safety wasn't a main priority back in the, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, and stuff like that, so they would never have a, a convertible world tour now. Unless you cl class the, uh, the TBR Tuscans. I suppose they would be classes uh, convertible, and, and the uh, Caterhams, the Caterham Super 7s. But they got like a massive roll cage over the, uh, the driver area anyway, so. I don't bloody know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I was hired to race, not to have brains. There we go. Lead has been taken, thank you. This series is very easy. I did make sure that the difficulty was on hard, so... Now, there is a charity event coming up, which I'm taking part in. It's uh, being organised by my friend Strat. And it's raising money for uh, MS, or multiple sclerosis. And it's going to be run on a Seto Corsa. I, I can't remember when the date is. It might be the 18th of August. Though I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I haven't got all the details yet, but it will be streamed and I'll be taking part in that. So, uh, yeah, I, w I will... Give more details when I know them. Oh, now we got the AC Cobras coming up. They're gonna try and take the lead from me. Yeah, go away. I need to get a new power supply at some point as well because uh, this one isn't powerful enough it seems. Um, the little white LED on the graphics card keeps flashing and I can see it in my peripheral vision it's really bloody annoying and if you get a, a little white flashing light on your 
graphics card, it just means it's insufficient power to power everything, so... I'm gonna have to get another one at some point. When I can afford it. But for now, it shouldn't cause too much of a hassle. It only blinks now and again, but it... It depends how many flashes there are. Sometimes it's just the one, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's four. But yeah, it is, uh, is a little bit annoying. It usually tends to go off when I'm playing a game, but not all the time. It's so like now, I mean, because it doesn't use much in the way of graphical power, I guess, it's still flashing away there. So, uh, I don't know if that would have been the cause for OBS to lag or, or what, I don't know. I honestly haven't got a clue. These things happen, I suppose. But, coming up to the final chicane. Beautiful. And, uh, yeah, victory for race number two, it seems. If we can get around this corner clean. Without the Cobra. Chewing up on the inside. Nope, we're good. And there we go, race number two. Clean sweep so far for both races. So we get to the points. Uh, ooh, look, number of the beast. 12, uh, 2666 from Pete Stanley, Russell, Wood, and... What's that? Merv Tapper. Race number three, Vallelunga. One of my favorite courses. And off we go. And of course the Cobra is going to get a decent start. They don't handle none too well, but they do get a very, uh, very decent start for a few seconds before being swallowed by the rest of the pack. Trying to get the draft of the Cobra, but they're just pulling away a little bit. Now's my chance to duck upon the inside. He's trying to protect his line. And there we go. Did do a bit of damage to his door. He's not going to be happy with that. And lap one is complete. How much damage did we sustain? Oh, not a lot. It looks fairly alright. I mean, the... Uh, the side wings are slightly peeling away, but it's not a massive problem. And here's the Cobra again. Now we just have the advantage on the acceleration. They don't... It's, it's weird with the Cobras. They, they handle like crap. And they don't really have the best top end speed because usually they only have about four gears anyway. Being a, a US muscle car. But this game seems to uh, ignore that and give them you know, better stats when they're driven by the AI. But again, that is always the case anyway because the AI are cheaters. We all know this. Coming up to the final lap, with a time of 109.5. Excellent quartering with the double apex. And Cobra is still there.
Yep, yeah, we got this one in the bag. He's not far enough or close enough to actually make any uh, moves for the lead. So that is three out of three so far. And the air horns are going crazy. And we could beat our lap time. Yes, 10795. Bloody lovely. Alright then, so the points 30 to 10, 766. Six. As we go to Bathurst for three laps around Mount Panorama. And off we go. What's that weird noise? Probably the Cobra's changing gear. Yeah, look how, look how easy it is to get up the inside. We can break so much later on these corners. Bloody hell. Too many jumps. Doing a wheelie as well on top of the crest. Right away. Shift your backside. Go on, move. leaders pulled a significant gap it's not uncatchable bouncing off the rev limit 164 miles an hour top speed nice up into third through the chase Lap one complete in a time of 2.0747. Back through Hell Corner we go. Oh, you ooh, muscled his way through. He's taking a few s tips from my uh, notebook, I think. Doing the old bump and run. Have some back. That's a weird sound. I think that's just a car bottoming out. Back through the twisties. Oh, bloody hell. The car shouldn't be doing that over these bumps. I've never watched V8 supercars at Mike Panorama and seen the car get airborne on the front end. Or even the Bathurst 12 hours. If that was the case, the, the circuit would be deemed a bit unsafe. Identical on speed, but we're close enough to make a move on the inside. Oh, thank you for getting rid of our windscreen. And starting the final lap.
Yeah, I think we got this. So this should be uh, race four. Or four wins out of four races, I should say. Just gotta survive the bumps. Easier said than done. Oh, and again, front end getting up. Perfect. Nicely done. Actually gained some tents on second place. And we pulled an unassailable lead. So, uh, yeah, definitely race four victory of four so far. Top out 164. A bit of a peculiar line through the chase, but that's fine. And there we go. A very, very easy victory. And there we go then. Four wins out of four was the point so far. 40 to 10 to 10. So we have a nice 30 point cushion at the moment as we head to the halfway point at Mantorp Short. Off we go. Now this one should be a nice easy walk in the park, I should hope. But in saying that, we haven't really done well here. We've actually uh, not won many races at this circuit. Oops. That, uh, oh, I've actually made him spin out. Okay. Well, that was unintentional. I was trying just to cut the chicane there just to get a bit of a run on the leader, but he's pulled away. At least these cars have a bit better braking ability than the four GTs. One complete. Very short laps as well. So at 1.1501. Probably take that down to about 110. Very unorthodox way of getting around the corner, but it works. We've got a run on the... Uh, is that another Aston? Or a Jag? Or whatever. It's an Aston. Get off. Thank you. Oh. That corner comes up very, very quickly, a lot quicker than uh, I would have liked. So I didn't mess up too bad, still in the lead. And what is our lap time? It is a 1... 1956. I think we can shave off about one or two seconds off of that. If we don't make any mistakes. lead. Now I'm just fighting for lap times now. Uh, 
That's better. Perfect. And what's our lap time? One seven six three. So yeah, about two seconds shaved off that one. Not bad. So that is fifty points to sixteen, fourteen, and ten. That is halfway through the championship, and now we got Shortwood Park before we go to Lochranoch up in Scotland. And off we go. Going straight on. Good. And take the lead. Thank you very much. Get into the wall. Oh, yeah. I forgot that. That stump does uh, poke out a little bit far. You think you can uh, take that corner a lot sharper and then. You see that Armco barrier just come out at you. And there's lap one, one thirty eight. No, 139. 139.19. Alrighty then, so we're coming up to the end of the final lap. Uh, I thought I'd skip ahead because it would have been a bit too boring otherwise because I was leading and there was nothing happening. I uh, sustained a little bit of damage because I did clip the Armco barrier that was poking out a little bit, but all in all, not too bad uneventful race. She's got three corners to go. And there we go. And victory for race number six in the series. Not bad at all. So let's have a look uh, who is in what position. I got 60 points to 20, 16. So uh, yeah, I can just about be beaten if I don't win any of the next races. But uh, that is not going to happen as we head to Lokranok 1. Up in Bonnie Wee, Scotland. Oh, and again, the bumps make an unwelcome return. First time Lochranok was introduced into the Toka series was Toka Touring Cars 2. Or Toka 2 Touring Cars, whichever. So it was a, a nice welcome return for this circuit. Been greatly updated since the Toka 2, oh, Toka 2 days back in the 90s. Now that was quite a spectacular jump. I think I actually landed on another car as well. It made him crash out, but... I'm stuck on the side of the building, come on. Collision detection. When you don't want it, it's there. I forgot that jump was actually there. I thought it was just like a little corkscrew section. Oh well, not to worry. Oh, 
again. And a lot of damage to the engine and wheels. But that's okay because that jump is uh, thumbnail worthy. Spices things up a bit anyway in the championship. So guaranteed we're not going to win. And even with a severely damaged car, we're still making jumps. Yeah, and the car is uh, changing gear for me now, so... Oh well, I'm not going to win this one, so I'm just going to skip ahead anyway. Like I did at, uh, what was it, Shortwood Park or whatever it was. Um, because, yeah, this is just going to be a bit tedious, me trying to fight for last place with myself. So, I will see you as we get around to the end for the final lap. Well, it's safe to say I have no chance in catching anybody up. They're already finished. And there we go. Quite an embarrassing race, that one, but... Oh, well. And there we go then. So I did finish last. How far was I back? 27 seconds. So I didn't get any points for that one. But we're still leading by, uh, yeah, 48 points. Is that right? 48 points, 38 points, 38 points. I can gank. Yes, I can math. Right, Lock Renock number two. Second verse, same as the first, we just go in the other way. Which is the correct way from uh, Toka 2 Touring Cars. And we're starting on the back section, rather than uh, on the mountainous area. The track has definitely been widened quite a lot from the Toka 2 days. And we're going on the secondary path. Oh, nice uh, getting airborne a bit there. Bit of a shortcut. And that is lap one of Lock Renock the uh, correct way. Yeah, the, uh, the Cobra pulling up behind the other Aston. Now, I did say that this car was black. It does look black, but it's actually a very, very dark British racing green. It doesn't really notice unless you're in uh, sunlight. And then you can see the slight greenish hue. Other than that, it looks completely black. Should get him here. Go on the inside line. No, not quite. Just glance off the barrier instead. There we go. 
nicely done. Not really clean, but hey, it works. And we don't get penalized for it anyway, so why not? again. Would have been funny if the car actually did a complete blowover. A la Mercedes 1999 Le Mans, but nope. It just sort of stops. A bit like on Gran Turismo where it just stops when you go on two wheels and you think, oh, it's going to tip over and then it just miraculously doesn't. And there we go. Finally, we win at Loch Renoc. So that boosts our points to 70 to 28 as we go to the penultimate race then at Michigan Loop. Two more races, both at the uh, street circuits. And off we go, starting fourth. And immediately get wheel damage. that up. Come on, break my windscreen so I can see. Come on. No, that didn't work either. No, I'm trying to uh, just glance off the wall to break the windscreen. But uh, it's not playing ball with me today. There we go. That's more like it. A little bit of damage done to the engine, tires, suspension and gearbox, but that is only very minor. And lap one completes with a time of 1.31.5. I think we can get a 128. That's my goal to go for. 128.4. And what was our time? It was a 127.126.7. Uh, well, what did I say? 128.4. So. That was a lot faster than I thought. Then we didn't make half as many mistakes as we made on lap one, so I suppose that does count for something. See, this is why I ask for uh, questions, because I can't think of a bloody thing to say, you know? Racking my brains, I'm like, hmm, what can I talk about? And I can't think of a damn thing. Well, my bonnet's sort of like doing a wobbly kind of thing. You see that? It looks like it's just bouncing. Vibrating. Oh, very odd. Stare at that too long, makes your eyes go weird. Oh, Christ, look at the lead we got. Bloody hell. Okay then, here we go. And that is race complete. I don't think we're going to beat the lap time. No. No, just shy of it. Uh, but yeah, that's another race done. And we got one more to go then. At, uh, what was it? Southfield Heights. Three more laps of the convertible tour.
See if we can get through without bashing the car to pieces this time. Ah, there you go. See the car just morphs through the uh, polystyrene boards. They always do that. They have no collision detection when they get to a certain distance from your car. Well, there goes our chances of keeping the car clean for this race. Oh well. Get your ass back here, sir. Thirty-seven, one, seven. It's the Battle of the Astons. Closer, just can't get past him. And just barge our way through, muscle our way through into first. Had to be done. Got a one thirty point six. I think he's yeah, he's still right behind. He's not going to cause too much of a concern. Whoa, okay, all right then. I didn't even think I was that close to the wall. I guess the rear end just clipped the uh, the wall that was coming out. Oh well. Eight out of 10 for our artistic impression. Get out of it. Back my position, you scum sucking moron. And that is how we take the lead and destroy the car at the same time. Yay! That was totally legit. I don't care what anybody says, that move was legit. So there we go, we get the final race victory then. And uh, we get 90 to 40. Congratulations! Yep, yeah, wins down the board apart from Lockronok 1 when we destroyed the bloody car. Right then, so now we should have 0.5%. Uh, and uh, what do we have next? The Mustang Challenge, six tracks. And I believe it 
Oh, excuse me. Internal burp. I believe it's just one car. Yeah, just have to change the color. So there we go. So I will leave it here for now. Next time, we'll do the 68 Mustang Challenge. And we got the Formula Fords, Pacific American, Super Copa. You can see them on screen. I don't need to do that. One championship I'm looking forward to, though, is the Lightning 500. We didn't have a chance to actually do that championship last time during the main career. So uh, two down, many to go. And uh, yeah, I will see you then for the 68 Mustang Challenge. Thanks for watching and take very good care.